in the church is there i said praise the lord let's pray together father we thank you for our bible study thank you for the privilege of coming before you lord we pray you open the pages of the scriptures to every one of us in jesus name we have known jesus as savior help us to know him more we know him is our sanctifier we we'll want to know him more as a baptizer in the holy ghost yeah there is more to know about jesus and as we know you more lord help us to love you more and to serve you more acceptably in jesus name bless all your people tonight in jesus mighty name we pray we're coming to the final verses of john chapter 21 and as we come to these uh, final verses our topic tonight is the final words of john's inspired gospel the final words of john's inspired gospel we're coming to chapter 21 reading from verse 21 peter seeing him says to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus says unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that Decide that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifies of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the book that should be written. Amen. Did the church say amen? As we come to these final words, we need to remind ourselves that the person God used to write the gospel according to John is John himself. But we're going to discover from chapter 1 to the very end to chapter 21, he never mentioned his name. One, because everybody knew him. He was the disciple whom Jesus loved. He was the one that was very close to the heart of the Lord Jesus. Not because of favoritism, but because of the kind of heart he had. The Lord that said, he that loves me, I will love. And the people who draw near to him, he will draw near unto them. For that reason, because of the heart, a loving heart, a compassionate heart, a leaning heart, a heart that is so yielded, completely yielded unto the Lord. Rain or sunshine, up or down, for better, for worse, he always loved the Lord. And he gave his commitment to the Lord without any reservation. And then he became titled as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And now as we have these uh, final verses, it was a final appearance of the risen Lord unto his own disciples. As he appeared unto them, you know the story. He instructed them after asking them, children, have you any meat? And they said they had nothing, they had none. He said, throw your net on that side and you will catch. And he caught a lot of fish and somebody was counting they had 153 heavy big and considerate and yet the net was not broken and john said that's the disciple whom jesus loved 
It is the Lord. He recognized him by the work he did, by the miracle he performed, by the supply he gave them. And after that recognition, Jesus said, come and dine. Nobody had asked any question because they knew here is the Lord, a Savior. Here is the Lord, a restorer. Here is the Lord, a provider. Here is the Lord that despite where we are and despite what we have done, he still came to us to minister unto us. After they finished eating, he asked Peter and he said, Simon, lovest thou me more than all these? You've gathered all these. Do you love me more than gain? more than profit, more than achievement, more than success? Lovest thou me more than all these? Your nature is full, and your nature is almost overflowing. Lovest thou me more than the overflowing supply? And he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He asked him again, after he said, feed my lambs. Lovest thou me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. If we love the Lord, it will come out in our service. If we love the Lord, it will not just be word of mouth. It will come out in a commitment to the Lord, a consecration to the Lord, a service to the Lord, a sacrifice unto the Lord. And he asked him the, the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me truly? Sincerely, wholeheartedly, with everything you've got, lovest thou me without interruption, lovest thou me without reconsideration, and thinking it over again, the consecration, the commitment that you gave unto me, and the pledge you made long ago, lovest thou me, that broke him down, almost to tears, and he said, but you know all things, you know that I love you. And Jesus said once again, feed my sheep. Repeated the word feed three times. And if we love the Lord, we're to feed the flock. The flock comes as number one. As we think about the Lord and the commission he has given us, the number one thing in our lives and the priority of our lives, the thing we ought to make distinction about is feeding the flock of God. After that now, he told him, and he said, when you were young, you went anywhere you wanted to go, and you did whatever you wanted to do, but as you come, as you become older, people will drag you here, drag you there, drag you there, where you don't want to go. Before this time, Peter had not gone to the prison for Christ, but he's saying, you know, as you're going on and growing in the Lord, imprisonment will come. You'll not like to go there, but you'll have to go there. And then persecution will come. And they'll take you places where you didn't think you will get your birth for my sake. Because of the expression of your love for me, that you will do. Then he said, follow me. You've seen how I confronted the Pharisees? Follow me. You've seen how I stood my ground when he said, Herod is coming and he's coming to take you and he's going to be terrible. You know, I stood my stand, follow me. And you see how I would always talk about the cross, the cross before me, the world behind me. And I didn't shirk from that. I didn't shrink from that. I didn't withdraw from that. Follow me. You have seen how I was faithful to the one that sent me. To my heavenly father and every time i was at my duty post simon peter follow me and as he was following because was now responding without any reservation unto the lord jesus christ john without any direct invitation and without any direct command he by consecration personal consecration he by consecration practical consecration he by consecration perpetual consecration i've laid my hands on the plow and i will not look back he was following and then peter saw him following 
and he said lord i understand what i'm to do i know you've told me feed my lambs feed my sheep feed my sheep that i know i but this one following he doesn't have any kind of commandment just personally he has chosen to follow what will he do and jesus said if i will that he tarry until i come they knew about his coming and he knew that many many years still to come he has not come now and he gave the promise and he gave the prophecy i am coming again and he said if i will that he tarry until i come what is that to thee follow thou me and the disciples had that the whole church had that and they misunderstood and they misinterpreted and they said jesus said john will not die physically until he comes again and when he comes john will remain as he is now and he's still going to be alive no sickness no death no grave he remains just as he is now when christ comes and then he'll go into the millennial kingdom that was their interpretation but john quickly said but jesus did not say that and yet everybody misunderstood he only said if i will that he tarry until i come what is that to you follow thou me and then he said this is the disciple at this time now it was about 96 a.d and all the apostles had actually died by this time matthew is gone and nathaniel is gone even peter is gone james his brother is gone everybody gone all those apostles only a john remaining because god still wanted to use him he said this is the disciple that jesus spoke about that he i want him to remain until i come what is that to you and he said we know that his record is true his testimony is true there are also many other things which Jesus did in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this uh, gospel. Because if everything should be written, I suppose even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. That's what we call hyperbole. Hyperbole is when you deliberately say something you know that is almost unbelievable very high very great because you are emphasizing how big the issue is at probably and the bible uses that many times when those uh, spies came back from spying the land of canaan they reported back to israel and to uh, moses they said we saw the Anakims there. We saw the giants there. And their walls are built high up to heaven. That's a parable. Not that there could be any wall that will reach the sky. But it was so high. We never saw anything like that before. That's how the same language John is using here when he said, if we should write everything, I suppose that even the whole world could not contain the books that should be written. And after he finished, he put the final word, Amen. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Tonight, as we look at those verses, the message is the final words of John's inspired gospel three things we're looking at number one is serious misinterpretation of christ's message christ gave the declaration if i will that i tell you until i come what is that to you follow thou me and then the whole people peter and the rest of them and all the disciples 
and the whole church misunderstood, misinterpreted, except John. John said, Christ did not say, I will not die. He only said, if I will that he tarry until I come, what is that to thee? A serious misinterpretation of Christ's message. Point number two, special miracles in Christ's ministry. Special miracles in Christ's ministry. John said, I have by inspiration, I have by the leading of the Spirit selected and chosen some special miracles I wrote about from the beginning of the gospel unto the end. It says, but these are not all the miracles that he performed. He did many, many more. But these ones are spectacular. These ones are specially chosen. These ones are selected for a purpose and for a goal. Point number two, special miracles in Christ's ministry. Point number three, the soul-saving ministry of Christ's ministers. The ministers chosen by God. The ministers sent by Christ. The ministers endued and endowed by the Spirit, baptized with the Holy Ghost. There is a ministry the Lord has given them. And John is telling us here, there is a purpose for the ministry of the ministers. is to save souls. Point number three, the soul-saving ministry of Christ's ministers. Number one. Point number one is serious misinterpretation of Christ's message. We're coming back to John chapter 21 verse 21. Peter seeing him says to Jesus, Lord, what will this man do? Jesus says unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, among the disciples, among the sons and the daughters of God, among those who are genuinely saved, yet they were not perfect in knowledge. It tells me not something. Your heart may be perfect. You may be sanctified, yet you don't know all things. Your head may not be perfect. You may still misunderstand. You may still misinterpret what the Lord had said in his word. That's how we come to the Bible study. If sanctification gave us perfect knowledge, we wouldn't need to come. If the Holy Ghost baptism gave everyone full knowledge and perfect knowledge, we will not need to come. But even though they were brethren, even though they were believers, they misunderstood, they misinterpreted. It says the brethren now, this is what they said, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, ye shall not die, but if I will that ye tarry till I come, what is that to thee? The disciples were not paying attention. Look at Matthew chapter 16. The Lord has said something similar to this even before this time. Matthew chapter 16. And we're reading from verse 27. It says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his works he spoke about his coming he's coming again and he will come in the glory of his father and at that time when he comes referring to the future when he will come there'll be the rapture after the rapture he'll take the people of god the saints of god to hear into the sky 
and then there will be great tribulation for seven years here on earth and after those years of tribulation then Christ will come physically and his feet will touch the Mount of Olives and he'll set up his reign and he'll reign for a thousand years in that kingdom. He referred to his second coming again. But look at this in verse 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here, not only one person, some standing here. Among his own disciples, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. He had said something like this before. And did they mean that they will not die because now Peter is included? And now James is included? And now they said, there are some of you standing here with me. You will not die. You will see the glory of the kingdom. Let's come to chapter 9 of Mark. Mark chapter 9. So you can see the continuity. Reading from verse 1. Chapter 9 of Mark, verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That there be some of them that stand here, Which shall not taste of death, till this they have seen the kingdom of god come with power until they have seen the kingdom of god come with power look at verse 2 and uh, that word and connects you to the verse that preceded after you said that some of you who are here you'll notice of death you see the son of man you see his glory you see his power, you see his majesty, and you see the glory of the kingdom. And then it says, and after six days, Jesus takes with him Peter and James and John, and he leadeth them up into a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow, so as to as no fuller as no washman can on earth can white it can white them and there appeared unto them Elias with Moses and they were talking with him he was showing them the coming picture of the kingdom that coming picture of the kingdom the Old Testament saints who died will be represented there, represented by Moses. And those who will be taken up in the rapture, who will not die, they will be there, represented by Elijah. And then he goes on to say in verse 5, And Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. This is the kingdom. And this is the glory. What else are we looking for? We, we ought to be here. So we don't go back to the dispensation of the world. And then it goes on to say, let us make three tabernacles. One for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say. For they were so afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Somebody there tell me. Hear him. Hear him. It's the son of God. Hear him. What did Peter say about that experience? About the experience on the Mount of Transfiguration. It was a picture of the coming glory of the coming kingdom and that was the fulfillment of what jesus said there be some of you standing here that shall not taste of death until you see the son of man in his kingdom look at the interpretation of the holy ghost as peter later wrote second peter second peter chapter one reading from verse 16 
2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. You see the fulfillment? That Mount of Transfiguration with Moses there, representing all the Old Testament believers that died, with Elijah there, representing the believers of the New Covenant that will not die, that was the manifestation of the glory of the majesty of the Lord when he will come again. And he said, we saw it. Look at verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. You understand then what Jesus was saying when he told them, if I will that he tarry until I come, until my glory is revealed, what is that to you? Follow me. Now we come to John. John, the beloved. The fulfillment of what Jesus said to him. We're coming to John chapter 1 verse 14. John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word became, was made flesh. And he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. John is saying, what well, was him? Jesus and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He said, we saw a kind of a splendor of the Lord. And we saw the glory and the majesty of the Lord. We were with him. Come to chapter 12. John chapter 12. We're reading from verse 40. In verse 40, it says, He has blinded their eyes, hardened their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I shall heal them. Look at this. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. It's not only Peter, James, and John. It's not only John that the Lord had promised now. Even in the Old Testament, Isaiah saw his glory and spoke about him. Not only that, if I will that he tarry until I come, what is that to you? If I want him to see my majesty and my glory, my splendor, my power, before he dies, what's that to you? Look at Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the air on his head of his head like pure wool his throne was like fairy flame and his wheels as burning fire here is daniel is beholding the glory is beholding the majesty is beholding the majesty of the judge the great judge the ancient of this he said i saw i beheld i looked look at verse 10 a fairy stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. He said, I saw that. I saw that. And this is the coming glory of the coming of the Son of Man. And even Daniel saw that. And the judgment was set. 
and the books were opened, and I beheld, I looked, I saw, and I, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain. And then it says, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. It's even seen the Antichrist I will be defeated. And as uh, concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Look at this now. I saw, I saw, I saw in the night visions and beheld one like somebody near tell me, if you are there, I want to hear your voice. Like the Son of Man. Who is that? You don't know that name? You love that name? Shout it out. One, like the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. That's Daniel. He saw the coming of the Lord. He saw the glory. He saw the power. He saw the majesty. He saw the splendor of that coming kingdom. If I will that he tarry until I come, if I will that he tarry and I give him the same glory, the same splendor, the same majesty of my coming, even before he dies, what's that to you? Follow thou me. And then it tells us there in verse 14. And there was given him dominion, that's Christ, and glory, that's Christ, and a kingdom, that's Christ, that all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. Now, if I will that he tarry, until I come, what is that to thee? Let, let's see the fulfillment of that. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, persecution, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God, they persecuted him, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha. Here is the fulfillment. If I will that it tarry until I come in power, until I come in glory, and I will see my glory and my majesty if I will that he tarry until he has seen the glory and the power of the kingdom. What's that to you? It says, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou was see, what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and on to Smyrna, and on to Pagamos, and on to Tatyra, and on to Sardis, and on to Philadelphia, and on to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like, tell me, tell me, say it aloud, he saw the Son of Man, but not like he saw him on earth. He saw the Son of Man, not like he saw him even after his resurrection. He saw him now in the glory of the coming kingdom. He said, I saw him, one like a Son of Man, clothed with garment down to the foot, and girt about with paths, with a golden girdle. He said, and his ears were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass as they burnt as if they burnt in a furnace and his voice was as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand 
seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining, shineth in his sun, in his train. And when I saw him, the glory, and when I saw him, his majesty, and when I saw him, the glory of the second coming, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his hand, right hand, upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And the keys, and have the keys of death and of hell and death. He saw him. He saw him. Even before he died, look at chapter 10, verse 1. Revelation chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 1. It says in verse 1, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow that was upon his head. And his face was as it was the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. What did he tell him? Verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again. All the other apostles had died, but she will still prophesy again. All the others have gone, but she will still prophesy again. He said unto me that must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. Chapter 14, verse 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man. That's what Jesus promised. If I will to tarry until I come in my glory, in my majesty, in my splendor, and you will see the glory and the power of the second coming, if I will that he tarry until he sees all that, what is that to thee? And now he said, I looked and I beheld a white cloud, and upon the cloud one that sat, one, one like on the Son of Man, having his head, having on his head a golden crown. And in his hand, a sharp sickle. We're coming to chapter 19, verse 11. Chapter 19, verse 11. He saw that glory. He saw that glory before he saw death. We're looking at Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him was called faithful and true. And in his righteousness, he does judge and make war. Uh, judge uh, and uh, make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his on his head were many crowns. And he had in him riches that no man knew but himself. He himself, and he was clothed with the vesture deep in blood and his name is called somebody tell me there the word of god the word of god and the armies which were in heaven followed him i saw that upon white horses and clothed in fine linen white and clean and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword we that that with siege he shall smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. He has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. Say it aloud. King of kings. And Lord of Lords, he said, I saw him. I saw him. That's what he promised. That's what he said. If I will that he tarry until I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. And as he prophesied and promised, it was fulfilled for him. Every promise of God, God gives us as believers, will be fulfilled before we die. Every appointment he makes for us. Before we die, and he says, This is yours. 
it will be yours in Jesus' name. You will not die till you see that glory, till you see that majesty, and till you see the fulfillment of the power of God and the fulfillment of the great kingdom of Christ in Jesus' name. Point number two, special miracles in Christ's ministry. We're coming to John chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 24. John chapter 21, verse 24. This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did. The which, if they should be reaching everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be reaching. And the church said, Amen. Amen. He said, It's not only these miracles that you read in John that Jesus did. He did some other miracles, some of them you read in Matthew, not in John. Some of them you read in Mark, you don't find them in John. Some of them you will read in Luke, you will not find in John. But John said, before you go, can I tell you something? There are some miracles Jesus performed that even Matthew, and Mark, and Luke did not try it because we all of us could not have written everything that he did look at chapter 20 john chapter 20 reading from verse 30 and many other signs truly did jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book he said, we have not exhausted everything Jesus did. His power is so great. And his miracles were so extensive. We couldn't have written anything. And that is exactly what the Bible expects of the Son of Man, of the Son of God, of the Almighty God himself. His miracles, his signs, uncountable job chapter 26 verse 14 job chapter 26 verse 14 lo these are parts of his ways only part only some not everything but how little a portion is heard of him how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? The gauge of his power, who can understand? The extent of his power, who can understand? The length and the breadth and the depth and the height of his power, who can understand? The thunder of his power the manifestation the oppression of his power who can understand psalm 40 i'm reading from verse 5 psalm 40 we're looking at verse 5 you can do more than we have read about if you have any challenge and you're saying i'm going to find a place in the bible where God performed a miracle like this, even if you don't find a place in the Bible, already you know the Lord will do this one. Because he can do beyond what you have read. The people in the Bible, the writers, couldn't write out everything. The extent of his power, the majesty of his power, the greatness of his power, the height and the depth of his power, who can tell? We cannot tell. And so even today, before he comes, he will do what we have never read about. Psalm 40, I'm reading from verse 5. 
Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. Many are thy miraculous works, stupendous works, great works of magnitude that you have done. Thy thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. We cannot enumerate everything, count everything, itemize everything. They're so great. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. The works of God, great works, mighty, magnificent, and the great miracles that he does. He says, I cannot number them. That's what John is saying. We cannot exhaust them. I pray that day will come in your life. Will come in my life. Ah, your amen for me is not good enough. And will come in our church in Jesus' name. That everything we have seen before, it's like we have not seen anything. Greater things will happen in every one of our lives. Psalm 71, and I'm reading from verse 15. Psalm 71, verse 15. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day, for I know not the numbers thereof. I know not the numbers of your wonder, the numbers of your miracles, the numbers of the operations of the Spirit. I know not the numbers thereof. I pray that time will come to you. Let's see now John. We're looking at John. And I'm going to show you some of the miracles that he recorded. And he said, you will not find this in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Because they did not exhaust everything. And I'm going to show you some of the miracles. That's what John was saying. That Jesus did. That Matthew could not exhaust. That Luke, Mark could not exhaust. Let's see. In, Luke, in John chapter 2. John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5. John chapter 2 verse 5. His mother says unto his servants. Whatsoever he says unto you, tell me, do it. And there was set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three fuckings apiece. Jesus says unto them, fill the water pots with. Are you there? Fill the water pots with. They were looking for wine, but he said, Fill the water pots with water. He'll turn your water into wine. That's the thing you have in your hand. Water is available. Water is available. Only wine is not available. The ordinary things you left that are available, God will use those ordinary things. He'll make the extraordinary in your life in Jesus' name. And he filled them up to the brim. And he says unto them, draw out now, draw out now. He had not even prayed, draw out now. He had not even said anything, draw out now. And everybody knew this was water. Draw it out now and bear unto the governor of the, of the feast. And they bear it. Whatever he says unto you, do it. A miracle will follow. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water and uh, which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and says unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then they which uh, that which is worse, but that was kept this good wine until now. Good wine until now. Something more than you expect. Something more than you are praying about. Something more than what you are looking for. 
it will come in your life in Jesus name there is beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifest forth his glory and his disciples believed on him chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 46 the miracles that John recorded that you don't even find in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. John chapter 4, verse 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee. He went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman says unto him, Sir, Come down, ere yeah, my child die. Your child will not die. Your wife will not die. Your husband will not die. That your friend in the critical condition will not die in Jesus' name. Look at verse 50. Jesus says unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. He had not even prayed. And he had not even commanded anything. He just told the man, go your way. Your son lives. Tonight, go your way. Your prayer is answered. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. And as he was now going down, his uh, servants met him and told him, saying, somebody there, say it for yourself. Say it loud. Your son, your daughter must live. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And, his, and they said unto him yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever, tell me, left him, left him, left him, cannot remain. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every negative thing will leave. So the father knew that it was at that same hour in the which Jesus says unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed and his whole house that's a miracle that the others did not write about look at john chapter 5 verse 1 after this there was a feast of the jews and jesus went up to jerusalem now there is a jerusalem but the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Mark never wrote about this. Matthew never said anything about this. And Luke never said anything about this. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water whosoever then falls after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever 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 disease he had and a certain man was there which had an infirmity how many years thirty and eight years when jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case he says unto him wilt thou be made whole answer now wilt thou be made whole 
your answer has given you the miracle. The impotent man answered and answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus says unto him, He has not even prayed. He didn't even touch him. And he didn't say, Close your eyes. He didn't say, Bow your head. He didn't rub his hands on him. He just says unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. That's you. You'll not wait for any other thing. His word is alone. He sent his word and heal them and deliver them from all their affliction. Can God heal on Monday? Can he perform a miracle on Monday? Do we have to wait for Thursday? You receive everything you ask him for. Verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole, and he took up his bed after 38 years of being bedridden, and he walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Verse 14, after what Jesus findeth him in the temple, and says unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. The power to go and sin no more came into that man. And the power to go and sin no more is coming upon you today. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. I'm reading from chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 1. Chapter 9 of John, verse 1. This miracle was not recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But look at John. He's selecting them. By the leading of the Spirit of God for a purpose that the people may believe that Jesus is the Son of God and believing they will have life eternal. Chapter 9, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, Jesus answered, neither as this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God shall be made manifest in him. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. And as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat of the ground, and made clay of the spittle, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool, Siloam, which he is being interpreted, saying, and he went his way. Therefore, and washed, and he washed, and he washed, and came seen. Know that the gospel writer recorded that, and yet that which was not recorded will be done in your life. Chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 25. Chapter 11. Verse 25, Jesus says unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Everything dead in your body will rise again. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She says unto him, Ye Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. And then, verse 39, Jesus said, Take here away the stone. Tonight, take here away the stone. Are you there? Take here away the stone. Verse 40, Jesus saith unto her, said not I unto thee, even though you have not read it in Matthew, you have not read it in Mark, 
you have not tried it in Luke. Did it I tell you? If thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. He has not even prayed. And he said, Father, I thank you. You have heard me already. He has heard you already. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, which stand by I said each, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Somebody shout it out. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus says unto them, Say to the person by your side there, Use me even instead of him. Tell them, Loose me and let me go. You are loosed. You are delivered. Go back home and enjoy your miracle. You see, that was not written by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, we come to chapter 21. John chapter 21. And here, we're reading from verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. Look at verse 6. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the sheep, and ye shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Seven miracles not recorded by other gospel writers. This one at his resurrection. None of them recorded this. But John is saying, Many, many miracles Jesus did. And you read some in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And now, I'm giving you these special ones that they didn't even write about. And I'm writing this for the purpose, for the reason, that you may understand that the power of the Lord Jesus Christ is without any limitation. You cannot know the depths and the height and the length and the breadth, the thunder of his power. Who can tell? I come now to Point number three, the soul-saving ministry of Christ's ministers. John is not going to tell us why have you reaching all these miracles. You put them on record so that the people may read. What's the purpose? Look at John chapter 30, chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 30 and verse 31. John chapter 20 verses 30 and uh, 31 it says many other signs truly did jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not reaching in this book verse 31 but these are reaching but these are reaching all these special miracles all these spectacular miracles, all these selected miracles, these are written that she might believe. These are written that she might believe. Anytime you minister, you are ministering that they might believe. Anytime you are preaching, you are preaching that they might believe. Anytime you are giving a message, you are giving the message that they might believe. Anytime you are giving a testimony, you are giving the testimony that they my belief. Anytime you have any service in the church of the living God, you're giving that service that they might believe. John tells us, he said, I'm talking about soul saving ministry. And it is so that the people who read this might believe. That's why he has written. It says, These are reaching that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. 
and that believing ye might have life through his name. Life through his name. He had a purpose, he had a goal. Can I remind you that this John the Beloved, he kept that purpose in mind every time. I'm writing this that they might believe. I'm revealing this that they might believe. I'm recording this that they might believe. Come to chapter 1, John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 1, reading from verse 12. But as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. That's my purpose. That's my purpose. And I'm showing that, that they might believe. Chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 22. Believe. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed. They believed. He said other people believed as I'm writing this to you. They believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. Chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 15. That they might believe. Chapter 15, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He said that's the purpose, that's the purpose of the writing that they might believe. Look at chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 41. Chapter 4, verse 41, and many more believed because of his word and said unto the woman, now we believe, now we believe. The reason why Christ ministered is so you can believe. The reason why he performed the miracles is so you can believe. The reason why John wrote the gospel is so you might believe. And the reason why ministers are preaching today and ministering today is so that you might believe. Now we believe, we believe. Not because of thy saying, but we have had him ourselves, and know that this is indeed Christ, the, the Savior of the world, the Savior of the world. And it goes on in other uh, chapters. Uh, look at uh, chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 46, chapter 5, verse 46. The, the, uh, the purpose is to believe. And there is reason when it comes to your turn to minister, you are telling yourself, I'm sharing this, I'm preaching this, I'm telling this, I'm testifying this, I'm witnessing this, so that the people might believe. Chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 46. It says in verse 46, For had he believed Moses, he would have believed me. For he wrote of me. But if he believed not his writings, how shall he believe on my words? The purpose is to believe. So when you read the writings of Moses, and you read the writings of the Old Testament and New Testament, make sure that you believe. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 29 chapter 6 verse 29 then answered jesus and said unto them this the work of god that ye believe on him whom he has sent this is the work of god that ye believe on him whom he has sent look at verse 35 jesus says unto them i am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger he that cometh to me shall never hunger. It will satisfy your hunger. It will satisfy your thirst. I've lost my crowd. And then look at, look at verse 35, latter part. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. It will satisfy you. I said it will satisfy you. Chapter 7, I'm reading verse 31. Chapter 7, verse 31. And many of the people believed on him. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. He came and he ministered. And the gospelers wrote down, recorded what he, what he did. And because of that, many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man has done? Look at verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, 
out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is said of the spirit we did that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Have you seen every chapter, every chapter from chapter 1 to chapter 2 to chapter 3 to chapter 4 to chapter 5 to 6 and to 7? Look at chapter 8. The purpose is to believe. Chapter 8 verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sin. Is, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. You believe, therefore you will not die in your sin. You will not perish in your sin. The servant that Christ has gone to prepare, thank God you will be there. Who am I talking to there? You'll be there in Jesus' name. Chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 30. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Chapter 9, verse 35. Chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? That's the issue. That's the cardinal point. That's the center of everything. To believe, not just to come to the Bible study, is to believe. And not just come to worship God, is to believe. And it's not just come to hear the word of God, the message of life, is to believe. Does thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is see, Lord, that I might believe? Believe on him. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, somebody there, I believe. And he worshipped him. That's the purpose. I'm coming to chapter 10, verse 25. Chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. You have not done the right thing. You have not believed the works that I do. In my Father's name, they bear witness of me. And ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Look at verse 42 there. And many believed on him there that's the purpose that's the reason for ministry that's the reason for writing that's the reason for the ministry of literature christian literature that's the reason for the ministry of christian media that's the reason for making the message to spread everywhere that the people that read that the people that watch that the people that hear might believe i'm looking at uh, chapter 11 and I'm reading from verse 42. Much, uh, John, John, John chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people we stand by, I said it that they may believe. That's the purpose. Everything was saved. Everything we teach, everything we emphasize, everything we expound, everything we apply, everything we have, the exposition of the scriptures, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Look at verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, what did they do? They believed on him. I'm looking at chapter 12, verse 46. Chapter 12, we're looking at verse 46. It says in chapter 12, verse 46, I am coming light into the world. 
that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. Believing on Christ, believing on Christ, and not abiding in darkness. Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 19. Chapter 13, verse 9, verse 19, 13, 19. Now I tell you, before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe. That I am he. That's the purpose. Believe that I am he. Chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. When you read the Bible, the purpose is believe. When you hear a message, the purpose is believe. When you read a tract or you read a book, Christian book, the purpose is believe. And when you hear the word of God, that the promise of God is given to us, that it will solve all your problem in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind, in your body, in your family, the purpose is believe. And as you believe, great work will be done in your life. Great manifestation in your life in Jesus' name. Chapter 14, chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do. Anybody there? You will do something great. You will achieve something great. Jesus will give you his power. He will give you his authority. You will identify with him. As you believe on the Lord, you are not going to remain the way you are now. You will do what you have never done. You will see what you have never seen. You will accomplish what you have never accomplished. And you will have what you have never got in Jesus' name. He that believes on me, the person that singles himself out, and the one that says, whatever others do, I know the Lord is talking to me. If I will that he tell you until I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me, as you follow the Lord, great manifestation of his power in your life, in Jesus' name. Verily, verily, surely, surely, assuredly, I'm, certainly I'm telling you, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And tell me, and tell me, can that happen through your life? I say, can that happen to you? Or are you going to remain a pygmy of a Christian all your life? Are you going to remain at the backyard all your life? You'll do something greater. You'll do something mightier. You'll do something richer in your life in Jesus' name. It says, very very lesson unto you. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do because... Because... Because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, what a check he has given us. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Your life will glorify the Father. Your life will glorify the Son of God. Remember, remember, a time is gone. I could have shown you uh, in other chapters too. Believe, believe, believe. John said, that's the reason why I wrote all about these special miracles that anyone that reads, anyone that hears will read and believe. And believing you will have life everlasting. And you'll have every other thing that the name of Jesus has promised for us in Jesus' name. Lord, I believe. Where are you? Lord, I believe. Where are you? Lord, I believe. Great things will happen to me. Great things will happen to me. Great things will happen through me. I believe. I believe. I believe. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. 
uh, no misinterpretation of the word of God anymore and no misunderstanding of the word of God anymore and these special miracles are recorded by John so that you will believe and as you believe mighty signs and wonders will be done in your life without any interruption in Jesus name 